take a trip from the Massachusetts North Shore down to Mystic, Connecticut. Here we'll visit Mystic Seaport, a recreated early 19th century village. The village contains authentic buildings of general stores, apothecaries, coopers, banks, shipsmiths, and many other structures collected from all over New England. Mystic Seaport is America's largest maritime museum. It was founded in 1929 and has a large collection of 19th century sailing ships and features a working preservation shipyard. The village is located on the Mystic River, which flows into Long Island Sound. This 19th century seafaring village is comprised of dozens of real New England buildings staffed with historians, musicians, storytellers, and craftspeople. Why does, it, why does it take four of you to do a paint job? Okay, two guys watching. It's, uh, well, we're mostly volunteers, so it doesn't, doesn't cost anything. It's not, no, no taxpayer money is being spent here. Okay, that's good. The town is laid out just as it would have been in the 1800s. One of the prized possessions of the Seaport Museum is the three-masted ship the Joseph Conrad. Built in 1882, the ship boasts of a figurehead not of a woman, as was the norm at the time, but of a gentleman, probably of Mr. Conrad himself. And now it's time to visit the town's blacksmith shop. In a seaside town, the blacksmith is called a shipsmith. The James D. Briggs shop was brought here from New Bedford in 1944. Well, what we're working on is uh, we're going we're to do a hook. So we've done, made about a two inch taper on here. Heat it up to a nice light orange. And then I'm going to hammer on the sharp corner hammer the sharp corner flat in this corner and this corner and this corner and that'll make it eight sided. Well an octagon. We'll hammer, hammer every one of those sides to make it 16 and 32 sided. Okay, right on the edge here. One, two, three, four. Eight, four five, six, seven, eight. Close enough to run. Next, let's visit the Nautical Instruments Shop. All right, what do you got here? Well, it's a clock that has a flint that can be made to make a spark, and it'll light this wick. And then at any time of night, you can have it light, so you can read. <laughs> so is there a kerosene place? Probably kerosene. In there? Be inside here, yeah. That is unusual. Quite unusual. <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Uh, anything else you got interesting? Well, let's see what else we have. We have this wooden works clock right here. And it's got all the wooden wheels behind. You can't really see them. But... Oh, all the gears are wood? Yep, except for this brass piece here. And what uh, what period did that come from? Well, like 1830. Oh, I was born in that year. 
Uh, you know, we couldn't make brass works because we had an embargo. Jefferson, our president, decided that since they were stopping our ships and taking Englishmen off our ships, yeah. even though we were American citizens at yeah. that time, that they were going to just not trade with England. So not getting any brass, we had to make clocks out of wood. wood. Which we, we had plenty of that. Yeah, so we have like, uh, this is oak here and the wheels are all cherry wood. That's great. So, uh, What's your name? Peter. Peter, thank you. So are you, were you on the Nautilus? I was this morning. Oh, okay, that's all. <laughs> From the front entrance of the Mystic Bank, we can see the Charles W. Morgan whaling ship. The Mystic Bank was not a bank which we use today. It was a commercial bank which offered loans and mortgages to shipping merchants. And the vault was made of granite, not to prevent burglaries, but to prevent fire from destroying customers' valuables. for printing to coin a phrase when we've used the coins to lock something. Wow, now, we're learning to coin a phrase. So we're going to pick this up and move it to the bed of a printing press. Now, you know, the first printing presses were made of wood. And uh, they look like this. And instead of having a toggle, which I'm going to pull in a minute, they would have uh, had a a lever to turn a screw. And uh, so uh, Gutenberg, back in 1450, would have put a chase like this, it would have been bigger, on a, bed, a wooden bed, and he would have had a big tinfin and frisk it like this, like this. So if you go online to uh, look for Benjamin Franklin's press, uh, Gutenberg's press, it's going to look like this here. And your paper goes in here, this goes down to hold the paper, this goes down on the bed of the press. Now my tinfin and frisket is back there leaning against the window. It's up here like this, braces on that wood up there. <coughs> but the uh, thing is, I use this if I'm doing something small. Same principle. Paper ran, this goes down to hold the paper, goes over to the front. Now instead of uh, uh, turning a screw, 1816, uh, we get the toggle. And I'm going to pull this. And it's 3,000 pounds of pressure going down, not weight, pressure going down to make my print. And what killed the printing industry? Pardon me? What killed the printing industry? Well, the thing is that uh, certainly the, uh, the computer. The yeah, computer, yeah. In the. Uh, oh, look at that. Show so that, uh, show that up there. People working together on a press like this could do 200, 240 sheets of paper an hour. Uh, and this was not put in, the paper was not put in. In 1889, the people of the Fishtown section of Mystic, Connecticut, commissioned this chapel as a place for Sunday school and prayer meetings.
Across the road from the general store is one of the most important establishments of the town, the chemist's or apothecary. Here the ship's captain would stock up on medical supplies for the long sea journeys. As most ships had no doctor aboard, it was up to the ship's master to see to the medical treatment of the crew. This chemist shop has a small doctor's office in it with a massive wooden desk and an examination table. In the adjoining room was the pharmacy containing all the equipment and medication of the 19th century. Oh, and yes, even live leeches for the cleaning of open wounds. Walk into the carve shop. And what do carvers do? Uh, well, we're uh, making decorations mostly for the merchant ships that we built here. Uh, clipper ships, coastal schooners. Uh, vessels engaged in uh, commerce. Uh, the working boats built in Old Mystic. <coughs> uh, fish and smacks, oyster draggers, uh, ships outfitted for whaling. Very, very modest decoration, if anything at all. Uh, the work on those boats was pretty rough, tough, dirty, greasy, gritty work. Why get all dressed up to get all messed up? Uh, as well, the working boats, when they're out at sea, they'll gather what they can. Uh, bring it back to the dock, they've got a product they can sell right there. Different with the uh, merchant ships, they don't really have a product to sell so much as a service to offer. They're going to move freight, trade, passengers, uh, mail, cargo from place to place. Decorations such as these lend out a certain uh, credibility and legitimacy in a line of business that's very, very competitive. Show me, show me the tools you use. It also uh, makes the ship look like a successful ocean-going venture. What's better for business than looking successful? Uh, I've got chisels, which are straight, uh, beveled on both sides, and everything else is a gouge. This is a number two, but you can see it's not really straight. It's got a slight sweep. How do you sharpen these things? Two to uh, number nine are true arcs of a circle. That means this is a number eight. You can take your eight, make a plunge cut, follow it by half, and it'll come right around and make a perfect circle. Variety of widths, variety of circle diameters. Um, let's see, this makes a relatively tight circle, about an inch and a quarter. But a number two that was an inch and a half wide would make a circle about 14 inches in diameter. Hmm. Uh, and also in combination, you get all kinds of sinuous sweeps. Uh, to sharpen them, when you get a tool, it's, it's factory sharp. Mm -hmm. This is just a leather strop. And all day long while I carve, I'll make a couple swap swipes on this. And you also have to work the inside. But it makes for a very, very sharp yeah. Takes a little bit of fingernail off there. <laughs> It'll work fine on the wood. Thank you. Sure.